Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we welcome Pharaoh said that yes. to our live stream. Yes. Pharaoh Ramesses El Atan, are you on the line? Yes, I am. How are you all doing? Uh, how are how you are doing? You? Good to hear from you. Yes, I'm doing great. It's, it's good to hear from you, and we're going to get right into it. What are the main foods people need to stock up with during this uh, pandemic of COVID-19? Uh, the main foods that they want to get is rice, beans, pasta, uh, mostly starches based on the fact you never know how long you're going to be in the house. Uh, they need to get uh, things like peanut butter, uh, jelly, uh, uh, they need to get spaghetti sauce for their pastas. Uh, these are the basics. And at the last minute, they can go get their vegetables or whatever because we never know exactly what day they might not even let us come back out. They might even close the store. Uh, a lot of uh, shipping companies, a lot of trucking companies are having a hard time uh, getting uh, the shipments out or getting people to come to work. And also, uh, they're getting kind of desperate to shut everything down right now because they're going to lose money if they don't get the country open back up. So they might force us to just stay in for two weeks to four weeks. You never know. So you want to get rice, beans, pastas, uh, things like that. Things that uh, are not that expensive, the things that can feed you and your children, that can stretch. Things that when you cook them, they kind of swell up a little bit. They kind of stick to your ribs. And that's the basics of what you want to get. And those are the things that are selling out the quickest in the stores. Mm -hmm. And so these are mostly dry good items, right? So so tell the people the logic yeah. of, of dry good items versus uh, uh, fresh produce. Fresh produce is not really a good idea to buy because you never know when you're going to be in the house. So just buy your fresh produce as you do regularly. Yeah. Right now, in case you're locked in the house, buy frozen vegetables, which I really don't eat, but I did buy them. In the case of emergency, you're going to have to eat what's available. Yeah. So buy frozen vegetables, buy these rice and beans and anything that don't eat those, buy your other food to eat now while we can still go to the store and have that put up just in case the day comes, you wake up and the National Guard is in front of your house. Oh. Mm. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about different movies that have to do with pandemics and uh, dystopian worlds and um, uh, pandemics and also uh, disasters, you know, post-apocalyptic type things. But uh, out of seeing all these movies, which you have or reading all the different articles or thinking about the pandemic of 1917 or looking at other disasters, would you ever think that we would in the United States would be in a situation like this that is a global pandemic situation. Did you ever think that that would happen? I thought it would be worse. I thought one day we'd wake up and a lot of people would just drop dead because um, people are basically experimenting with their lives by the pharmaceuticals they're taking and by what they're eating. They're eating food that after a certain amount of time uh, everybody's going to have to cash that check at the same time. If you're all eating uh, McDonald's and Burger King for uh, 20 or 30 years, what's the results of that? Will we all get sick at the same time? So I expect it. I expect worse. I expect more of these type of problems. Because if you look at coronavirus uh, from 1930, when they first started investigating, then it comes from chicken. And uh, when 1965, when they studied it, they found out it came are from pigs and rats. Later they find out that all the animals that have coronavirus are rats, mice, chickens, turkeys, cows, dogs, cats, rabbits, and pigs. And these are animals that are on farms and there's cross-contamination amongst them. And so if you're eating an animal that has this already, uh, if a pandemic breaks out, uh, your body is the perfect house for it. It goes in your body. How can it tell the difference between you and the chicken and you and the cow when this is what's stuffed into your colon? So I've been trying to tell black people for a long time, we have to stop eating this dead flesh and go back to plants. 
plans will put it in by the creator to make sure they take care of it. This is where we build our house from wood. This is where we make our paper from hemp and wood. This is where we get our medicine. This is where we make our clothes from cotton. So the plants are the savior of the people. The Bible says, the leaves of the tree shall be for the healing of the nation. So we need to go back to plant-based and we need to leave the dead animals alone. Or it's gonna be worse than this. Mm -hmm. So you would say that eating a plant-based diet that's the advantage versus uh, eating pork, beef, uh, chicken, even fish. The, the, the plant base is the way to go and people should be. Let, 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 let me put it this way. Let me preface it with this. I remember we were at this uh, restaurant and we were at a, at a pizza restaurant here in Las Vegas. And I elected to get the vegetarian pizza with with the spinach and everything on it right with the whole grain crust and the the people who i was around was were laughing at me and they were saying look at this garbage that you got it looks like a garbage can i said well when the time comes now this was like two years ago and i told them when the time comes we will have to be thin a thin people and almost transparent to be able to withstand what's happening with the atmosphere what's happening with the ozone layer or what's happening if something disastrous happens we have to be able to only eat possibly once a day or maybe not be able to eat for several days and still be able to function 